In this video, I'm going to ask what happens when we put a spoon in a, a cup of boiling tea. Now the bottom of the spoon is now in water at 100 degrees. The outside is still in the air. But as time goes on, the spoon will get hotter and hotter and hotter. At the moment, it's perfectly comfortable to touch. But if I were to leave it in the water for a few minutes and then come back, I might well find that touching the top would burn myself. So let's try and model this. When we first put the teaspoon into the boiling water, the bottom will be very hot, whereas the rest of it will still be at room temperature, say 20 degrees. So if we plot a graph of temperature against position, whereas here is this part of the spoon and there's the top of the spoon, we will see that the temperature will be 100 for the bit that's in the boiling water and then drop to room temperature, let's call that 20 C and 100 C here. So let's say the water goes up to about here, the spit will all be at 100 and the spit will all be at 20. Now that's not going to last very long. We have an absolutely incredible temperature gradient here, in fact an infinite one going from 100 to 20 in no space at all, which means there'll be a huge flow of heat through the spit as down here there's no temperature gradient, so there'll be no flow of heat. So what that means is if we look at this little space over here, it's got lots of heat coming in from this side, no heat going on from that, out from that side, so it'll warm up rather quickly. As it warms up, the temperature gradient will look something like this. Once again, there's a steep temperature gradient here, not much over here, so heat is going to pile up around there. So the temperature will start looking more like this. And as time goes on, the hot part will spread progressively further and further up the spoon. Now, how far will the situation go? If all the space over here was a vacuum, and no heat could escape from the handle of the spoon, then the temperature would keep going until it gets steady state, and then keep climbing until the whole spoon was at 100. But that's not going to happen in practice because this is not in a vacuum and there will be some convection and radiation of heat and conduction into the air. So this whole process is rather complicated. But what we're after here is a rough estimate of what the time scale is. Does this whole process take milliseconds, hours, minutes? So that's what we're trying to work out here, a rough, approximate time scale, just to know how fast things are changing. Is it nanoseconds or hours? How are we going to do this? Well, let's look at how much heat is being conducted into the handle of the spoon and compare it to the heat capacity of the handle of the spoon. And that will give us some idea of how rapidly things are going to be heating up. So let's look at our spoon handle. I'm going to approximate it as a rectangular prism, because why not? Uh, let's imagine it's about one millimeter thick, three millimeters wide, and about 10 centimeters long, roughly speaking. And it's made of steel. And we can look up that for steel, the thermal conductivity is around 50 watts per meter per Kelvin. OK, let's treat it as a one-dimensional problem. Just assume the heat is moving uniformly up here. In that case, we can approximate the heat transfer for conduction equation as the heat flow equals K times the area times the temperature gradient, dt by dx, say. Now what's the temperature gradient? That's going to be rather complicated. It'll be very, at, the, at the beginning it'll be very strong here and flatten out, but roughly speaking it's going to be about the temperature difference, which is 80 centigrade, divided by the length, which is 10 centimeters, 0.1 meters. Area is 3 millimeters times 1 millimeter, which is 3 by 10 to the minus 6 meters squared, and k equals 50. 
So factoring that in, this comes out as about 0.12 watts. So it's not a huge heat flow. This is, of course, an approximation. Once the tip of the spoon is warm, it'll be less than that. It'll be more to begin with, but only in the first part. But it's a rough estimate of the overall value. Now we can ask, how much energy do you need to heat up the handle of the spoon? Of course, different parts are at different temperatures, but let's assume it's all at the same temperature, again as an estimate to give us a rough time scale. So the volume is width times length times height, which comes out as a whopping roughly 10 to the minus 7 cubic metres. This is an estimate just for the top bit here, say the top 3 centimetres roughly. Specific heat capacity of iron is about 500 joules per kilogram per kelvin. So the energy needed to warm it everything up by one degree is the density, which is about 8,000 times the volume, 10 to the minus 7. So that combined gives us the mass times the specific heat capacity, which comes out as about 0.4 joules per Kelvin. If we compare that over here, we see that it would take about three seconds to warm up by one degree. Therefore, to warm up to uncomfortable temperatures of 50 degrees, it might take of order a few minutes, which sounds about right. So this all seems to make sense. It starts heating up by a degree every few seconds and will get quite hot to the touch after about a minute or so, and that's about what I experience with these things.